In this video, I'm going to go over 2D arrays in C. So we can declare a 2D array like this. We can say int, and we can say a, and then here we give a number of rows. So I could say here like two, and then we give a number of columns. So I could say here three, and then we can then give the actual values here. So I could say here one, two, three for the, the three values in my first row, and then I could say four, five, six for the values in my second row there. And this would then declare the array that's going to have two rows and three columns. And we got the two rows specified here. And we got the value for each cell in the row here. So we could then print out this data. So we could say here like print F and we could say A and we could say maybe we'll say here zero and we'll say two and we'll say it's equal to percent D and then we'll output the data here. So we'll say A0, A2. So A0, A2, what this means is print out the, in the first row, that's what the zero is, print out the third element in it. So that'll be three. So we should get that A0, 2 is equal to three. So let's compile this and just see. So we do and we get three. If I said A11, that would be the second row, second element in the row, because we start counting from zero with arrays. And so we could compile this and we'll get, and I should probably change this to one, one, just so it's less confusing, but we'll get, you know, five now. So I can compile this again and we get five. Now, when we're, when we work with 2d arrays, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll have constant values for the number of rows and the number of columns in our arrays that we're working with. So I could say something like this. I could say number define, and I could say rows and I could say two and I could say number define and I could say calls and I could say three. And the idea here is that then if I write, write code that works with my arrays, I can just use these constants wherever I need to reference the number of rows and number of columns. So we, we might use something like this to specify the number of rows and columns and, and just use it then when we're declaring the array and initializing it. So one thing that's interesting, just so you know, with 2D arrays, technically speaking, I could initialize it like this. So technically speaking, I could say, let's get rid of this squiggly bracket, get rid of the squiggly bracket, delete this here. So this will technically work as well. This will actually also initialize the array here. So if I run this here, it still works fine and we still get five. And what goes on is that basically the C compiler knows that, that you know, you've got this many rows, this many columns specified. And so based on that, it sort of takes the first three values and says, okay, here's your first row because you've got three columns and here must be your next row because you, again, you've got three columns here, right? So you can technically initialize the 2D array like this as well. I don't really like to do it that way though, because that's confusing to me. So I like to do it this way. Now, one thing you might want to do is initialize a 2D array with user input. So we could go over an example of that. Let's do that now. We'll say here four and we'll say int i is equal to zero. We'll say i is less than the number of rows. We'll say i plus plus. And then we're going to say here four int j is equal to zero. j is less than calls j plus plus. And we'll say here print f and we'll have to put in some squiggly brackets around here. So we'll say print f and we'll say enter a percent d percent d is equal to and then we'll just say here i and j and then we'll use a scanf and we're going to store an integer so we're going to say percent d as the placeholder there and we're going to say here and and then we say a i j and what this is doing is we're basically asking the user to enter the value in for a at i and j and then we're going to use scanf to read in an integer and store that value at a i j at this position here. So we can give this a try here. Now, the only thing is, I mean, we can give this a try. The only thing is I got to print out the array first. So I got to, 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 to see it too, right? So I could say one, 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 and we do, we've just tested it, right? And it looks like it's working. It looks like we're setting all the first row values and then all the column values. So it looks like it's working, but now I could write some code to print the array out just to make sure that I actually am setting all the values correctly. So I'm going to say here for int i is equal to zero. i is less than rows, i plus plus. I'll do the same thing here. I'll say for int j is equal to zero, j is less than, j is less than the calls, j plus plus. 
And then I'm going to do a print F again. So I'm going to say print F and I'll say this time I'll say a percent D percent D is equal to percent D and I'll print I J and a at I J. And so what we're doing here is we're going to print out the value of the array at position I J each time. And we're just, we're just, again, we're looping all over all the rows, over all the columns, and we're going to print out the value of the array at position I and J each time here. Okay. So let's, let's try this now just to ver verify that we actually are setting the values correctly. So I run this here. It says enter a zero, zero. I could say like one, 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 one. And now when I print out the array, I get one, 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 one. And so it seems to be working correctly. I'll just do one more test. So this time I'll say like 99, 88, 77, 66, 55, 44, and I get 99, 88, 77, 66, 55, 44. And so we're happy with that. And so what's kind of cool about defining the rows and columns with constants like this is if I ever want to increase it, like let's say I want to increase the number of rows now, this code will no longer work because I'm initializing here to some set values here. So this, this code would no longer work, but this code here, this code here will adapt just fine to the new number of rows and columns because I'm not really using a, a specific value here. I'm using some constant rows that's defined up here. And so when I increase the number of rows, this loop will just run an additional time, right? And then we'll just set the values for the rows that way. And then again, same thing with this code here, you know, rows will just increase by one, we'll print out an extra row and, and this code will work fine, um, unmodified just by modifying the constant. So that's one reason why we like to use constants when we're working with these kinds of arrays too, just because it makes them easier to work with. So here I, I can just enter in some values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine output. So we can also pass 2D arrays to a function. So we could do something like matrix multiplication via function. If I'm going to do matrix multiplication, I want to define the dimensions. So I want to say like M is, we'll say three, we'll say uh, N is, we'll say four, and then we'll say P we'll say is, let's say five. And then we can define a matrix, uh, matrix multiplication function. So we can say here void matrix mult and we'll say here int and this will be the result matrix so we'll say c is going to be m by p in size and then the the two operands we'll say a is going to be m n in size and then we'll say b the next operand is going to be n and p in size and so what we're doing is we're going to multiply we're going to do a matrix multiplication of a and B, and we're going to store the result into C. And I'll provide a function definition down here. But this is how we can then specify the dimensions of our matrix in the parameters of the function. And if we're going to pass a 2D array to a function, we are going to have to specify the dimensions in the parameters. It actually is possible, though, to only specify one parameter there's actually several ways you can go about passing 2d arrays to uh, a function but this is a common way is to just specify both dimensions so we'll we'll actually just throw this down here and then we'll define our matrix multiplication function using the classic algorithm here so we're going to say here for int i is equal to zero we'll say i is less than and the resulting matrix is going to be m by p so we're going to say here m i plus plus we'll say four int j is equal to zero j is less than p we're going to say j plus plus then we're going to say four int k is equal to zero k is less than n we're going to say k plus plus and we're going to say that c at i j plus equals a at i and we're going to say k times b and we're going to say k at j and this will then perform the matrix multiplication now the only thing is we're going to want to make sure that if we're using this algorithm here that this 2d matrix here c here that's m by p dimensions we're going to want to make sure that it is not um already populated with data. So we're going to actually put some zeros into it just because if I were to say add to, to a matrix that's already here, that's already present, 
the data the data fat matrix is already present in C, then this algorithm wouldn't work because we were kind of assuming that Cij is zero at the start for all i and j. So I'm just gonna purposely set it to zero at the start just to make sure it's zero. But this should then perform the matrix multiplication here. And so we could then declare some matrices and, and try this code out here. So what do we got here? We got M, N, and P, and we've got, we wanna make A and B. So, we'll, okay, so we'll make these matrices here. I'll say int, I'll say, and. I'll say here capital A, and I'll say this is going to be M by N. And we said that M is three and N is four. So we're gonna have, we'll say here, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll say eight, nine, 10, 11 and that'll be the matrix a there that's m by n that is three by four and then we're going to have the matrix b this one here is going to be n by p so it's going to be four by five so four by five four b there so uh this one here n by p so we're going to say n by p which is going to be four by five so i'll just make this one a simple one. I'll make it one, 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 one. So four, and then there's gonna be five. Uh, we said four by five. So uh, four, four rows, five columns. So five columns, four rows. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we'll do one more row here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we're going to make the matrix C. And this one is going to be, we said, M by P, which is going to be 3 by 5. So we'll make this one 3 by 5. We'll say here, int C. And we'll say this one is going to be M by P in size. So it's going to be 3 by 5. So M by P is 3 by 5. So three rows five columns. So again, we'll have four zeros and we'll just do this or five zeros. And we'll do this three times here for the three rows here. So here's our matrices, our matrices. And now we could pass them to this function to perform matrix multiplication. So we could say matrix multiplication of C, A and B. And then we'll then then we'll print out the result. So we'll do we'll do something very similar to this, we're going to print out the result. So I'll actually just copy this code here. I could probably make a print matrix kind of function, but we'll, we'll copy this code here. And it's going to be an M by P matrix result. And we'll print out the result here. I'll say C is at I and J and C at I and J here. Okay. And what I might do just to pretty things up a bit is I'll just do some printfs here just to kind of with some new lines here, just to kind of put, put things on another line here. Okay, so let's give this a try here. Oops, didn't put it in right. Uh, error it says use of undeclared identifier B. Oh, I forgot to call it B here. I call it B. That doesn't make any sense otherwise. So we call it B properly. We run it. This is just the first code I had there. I could probably comment this out, but. Okay, so what do we get here as a result? We get C and we get 10, 10, 10, 10, 22, 22, 38, 38. And you know what? This is actually the correct answer as well. So we actually have implemented our matrix multiplication as well, which is an example of how to pass 2D arrays to a function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.